we have a folder with a single max file and its textures. This folder has already been added to the connector. Let's drag and open the file in 3ds Max and see what's inside. I'll just open it now. OK. OK. So we have four objects inside. These nice tables by the Swiss brand Deset. Each object is properly named, and that's important because the new assets that we're about to create will use these names. What we basically want to do is separate these four objects into four separate Max files. The idea is to have a file containing just a single object, properly positioned in the center of the world coordinate system and with a nice asset preview attached. So I'll now select all objects and use the Add Asset to Connector option. Here we have the option to save the whole scene as an asset or Use just the selected object, which is what we need now. This option is very useful when you add assets on the fly from scenes and projects you're working on. I'll just add a couple of objects to simulate this. OK, let's select the objects we need and choose Add New 3D Asset from Selection. Now, in the interface that pops up, I'll have this Split option switched on. I need this in order to force the connector to separate or split the objects as independent assets. So let's activate it again. There are some options to help us define the names of the new assets to be created. I have object name selected now. And I'll leave it like this because I want my assets to inherit the names of the selected objects. Remember, I have them properly named as I don't want to use the file name or something else in that case. So let's select again, click Add Asset to Connector, then Add New Asset from Selection. I make sure Split button is switched on and also Object Name checkbox. Next thing to check is where my assets will be saved in. I think we can just use the same folder here. OK. Now the more interesting part with the assets previews. I'll first switch to Grab from Viewport to make it faster and easier. And then click on the button here to open the additional settings. I'll leave Get from Active Viewport option, but will deselect the Zoom Extends and Isolate Asset before generating preview checkboxes to show you what will happen. Let's already add the assets by pressing the button and waiting a bit to have everything processed. It's done. So let's see what we have in Connector. OK, we have four new assets created each one named after the single object saved inside. But what's wrong is that all the assets have the same preview grabbed from the viewport and this is not what we'd like to see. We have the different objects inside the file but the previews are the same. And we'd normally want to have individual previews for each asset. Let's open one of the assets in Max. I click Merge. That's OK, as I already have an object with the same material, so I click whatever option. And here's the asset. Let's choose another one and merge it. OK. I'll delete these now and go to Explorer. and delete the assets that I've just created.
What's interesting is that in Connector, these assets didn't disappear, but only show as missing. This is because Connector has already cataloged these assets. When we add a preview, category, or description to a file, Connector turns it into an asset and adds all the info into the database. So it's cool that though we deleted the files, the information is still here, and we can even see the previews that we generated. Now, let's go back to Max, select the objects, and open the Add Asset interface. We'll use the same settings, but this time I'll select the Zoom Extends and Isolate Asset before generating preview options. This will tell Connector to isolate each object and generate individual previews. Let's add the assets now. You can already see how the viewport previews are being generated. And in Connector, we now have the right previews for each asset. Nice. But here's another detail. As you see, the previews that we previously generated are still here. And we actually have three previews for each asset if we count the native max preview. I can, of course, manually delete the old preview but that's not really a good option if we have a lot of files to update. So I'll just select all four assets, go to Tools, and choose Remove Previews. Oops, it's not this one. Here, this one. Yes, Remove. Now we have all generated previews removed, and only the native ones are here. Going back to Max. Same steps, use same options, and click on Add. Now, there is a warning that files with the same names already exist and the assets will be created with new names. We don't have the option to directly override files for now, so I'll choose No. Then, go to Explorer, select and delete the files. Yes. Back in Connector, the assets are again marked as missing, which is OK. Back to Max and click Add. Okay, we have four nice assets with their previews generated directly from the viewport. Let's see how we can generate previews other than just grabbed from the viewport, which is fast, but not very appealing. I'll now select and delete files directly in Connector. Okay, done. I still have my selection in Max, so we'll just open the Add Asset menu. And this time, instead of Grab from Viewport, let's use the Current Render Settings option. This will basically use whatever options you have in your opened scene render setup. I have Vray here with the very basic options. So I'll only add some environmental GI. Let's choose another perspective view. I'll also delete these boxes here. By default, the previews will be generated using these values for the output size. But you can also set a custom size from here. And I'll leave these to 200 by 200 pixels to speed up the rendering. We also have this option to set a custom background color, which will override the max entertainment color, or anything here in Vray settings. Okay, let's just choose a color here. I'd also like to set a bit different point of view.
Okay, let's check again the options. Now let's use another option. Now let's use another option to name the assets. Instead of object name, I'll use the file name option. This will use the actual file name of the open scene. But we have not one, but four assets to add. So let's see what we have in settings. Under the Files Numbering section, there are some options to control how numbered files are created. We have the number of digits and how they are separated from the actual name. I'll use the underscore now, and from here we set if the numbers go after or before the name. Okay, another check of the previous options. And add. These are going pretty fast as I set the output size to only 200 pixels. Another few seconds. And... Done. Now in Connector, we have four assets with their previews generated using only the current render settings. These are not really good looking, but it's just to illustrate the concept. Very often, we'd like to update assets with new previews. Possibly better previews. We can now close that scene since we've already created the assets. Let's select them in Connector and drag and drop in Max. Let's choose Generate Previews slash Files option. In the interface that pops up, we see the files we've just dropped in a list. You can also use the small plus minus buttons to add or remove files at any time. The changes will appear in the list. Okay, let's click on the Options button. It actually opens the same interface we used to create the assets. But now we'll use Render Studio option to generate better previews for our existing assets. You see that I already have one Render Studio added here. If we click on Settings, we'll see all its details including a preview and the location of the studio file. Okay. I'll also use Studio Cameras option here. So this way I'll have my assets merged in that studio and rendered using the camera in there. Another thing I'd like to do is get rid of the previously generated previews. To do so, I'm going to activate the Remove Old Previews button. Let's also open the Asset Previews additional settings because I'd like to set a custom render output size, like 200 by 200, or even 150 pixels. Okay, we are ready to process the assets. All right, it's nearly done now. Four files processed with no errors, which is nice. Go back to connector. I see that my assets have new previews generated. Also, the old previews have been removed. I'm gonna open the render studio file. Here is the camera used to generate the previews. Remember that studio camera option we used. I'll now create a new camera. Camera 005. Let's adjust the view a bit. Okay. 
save I can use the plus button to add again my assets or drag them from the connector both will work only thing is that currently you can add files one by one which is not very convenient if you work with lots of files so this is something we'll change pretty soon let's just add two files to show you how it works and now delete them I'll just drag all my files again from connector and by the way, you certainly don't need to have the Render Studio scene opened. Okay, we have the files in that list. Open the Options interface. I have the Render Studio option selected. Let's open the additional settings. This time, under the Studio Cameras dropdown, I'll select a new camera I've just added to my Render Studio file. I even have other options like Left View or the Vray Sun. I'll choose camera 005. I make sure Remove Old Previews button is turned off because I'd like to add new previews to the existing ones. I'll also keep the custom size option like this. And now let's process these. Done! And now we have two render previews for each asset. 